a subsea completion Christmas tree, proven equipment for offshore production. Oceaneering's gym, an atmospheric diving suit, proven equipment for deep water support. High performance equipment alone cannot guarantee the continued progress of a rapidly expanding petroleum industry. The future of offshore growth depends today on people working together, people with special knowledge and skills, companies with solid practical experience, and the foresight to share ideas with other experts, from oil producers to equipment manufacturers to service companies. The key is cooperation. The performance tests being conducted in this tank represent the final stage of a cooperative planning effort to unite Jim's work abilities with the maintenance needs of the subsea completion tree. Jim was contracted to assist in the tree's actual installation in South American waters and then to carry out a long-term schedule of inspection and maintenance on it and a field of satellite trees multi-well templates, and production risers. By coordinating their individual expertise, Oceaneering International and the wellhead manufacturer succeeded in bringing sophisticated, proven equipment together to form an effective team. But first came the vital planning. Walt Thompson, professional, highly trained veteran diver, a gym expert, Thompson operated the suit during Oceaneering's 1976 landmark dive in 900 feet of icy water beneath the Canadian Arctic and was involved in this project from its inception. Before any wet testing could begin, it was critical that technicians from both companies determine how Jim could work most efficiently on the tree. As Jim needs a base to work from, one of the most important additions to the design of the tree has been the walk around around the tree. One of the biggest jobs is going to be to replace this upper master valve. Using a special handle, Jim can close the valve. He will then be required to break the nuts loose with this specially designed hydraulic wrench. Once the nuts are free, then using this special speed wrench, which we have over here, he will then back the nuts off. I'm now closing the valve. Yeah, roger, roger. As programmed in repeated surface rehearsals, Jim first shuts down the valve to be removed. This tool functions as a ratchet, allowing Jim's operator to position the handle easily for improved leverage. Jim's center of gravity can be altered with little effort by the operator to retrieve objects easily and provide excellent mobility on the seabed or along the walking platform. The hydraulic torque wrench Jim uses to loosen each valve nut is controlled from the surface station on voice signals from the operator. It's designed to fit into the rather small space between the valve housing and a flange bolted onto the tree. Next. A simple geared speed wrench is applied to remove each loosened nut. Jim's proficient manipulators are rotated 360 degrees from within, surpassing human wrist action to maintain a strong grip on any tool. Jim is available to the offshore industry exclusively through oceaneering. Successful since its first working dive in 1974, the system has established an outstanding track record, completing scores of vital support tasks in fields around the world. Before and after every job, Jim is disassembled and carefully examined. The smooth movement of Jim's joints and manipulators is in fact a major design achievement a feature that allows the suit to work effectively beyond the range of conventional saturation diving teams. Constructed of an aluminum alloy, the joints are filled with hydraulic fluid 
to create an interior pressure greater than that of ambient water pressure. Thus, the easy motion of each joint remains constant regardless of depth, a feature that also significantly reduces the operator's physical load and therefore his fatigue. If for any reason an O-ring should uh, blow at any time, there's a metal-to-metal -metal seal. It clamps down so you can't get any water at all. Now let me tell you something about the manipulator. Um, the hand enclosure first is made once again from uh, GRP, glass reinforced plastic. But uh, the manipulator itself, once again the inevitable O-ring holds it together. Similarly designed to withstand great outside water pressure, the suit's manipulators are the key to Jim's versatility as a working diving system. Right on a push rod system. Uh, water tightness is maintained by a system of O-rings. The dexterous magnesium manipulators offer Jim's operator a vice-like grip to work confidently with most normally handheld tools. Just an ordinary spanner but with a, a bit of sea bar on there. Once again, the manipulator comes in there, as you would do under water, and pull. Then once it's held, you just roll that down, so. And tighten up. This is all from inside the hand enclosure. Now you try and take that. You can't. Backup seals on joints and manipulators are engineered to preserve the atmospheric suit's comfortable, surface-like working environment. This means that the unique system requires no time-consuming diver decompression, nor the bulky on-deck equipment and expensive mixed gases to support it. Jim's minimal on-deck crew and lighter weight launching gear are appealing economic advantages. And the entire package is quickly mobilized to job sites. Okay, Roger Wall, bolts one, two, five, or out. Crew and operator prepare for the last phase of the valve removal. The davit is lowered into position. Keep coming down, slowly. I've got the davit now. Keep coming down. All stop. Okay, I have the davit lined up with the hole. Come on down slowly. That's good. All stop. Slack off a little on the load. Hold that. I'm releasing the shackle from the lifting bridle. Get ready to take the crane to the surface. Secured, the davit is ready to cradle the valve pod once it is extracted. Jim's excellent direct voice communication with the surface eliminates the awkward problems often encountered by helium breathing saturation divers. The regular maintenance functions done on this and similar wet trees call for Jim to use a full range of tools, including removing corrosive buildup with a grinder, severing cables with a cable cutter, securing flange nuts with an impact wrench, and thorough cleaning with a high-powered water blaster. Jim can also carry a cathodic protection testing probe and frequently uses a portable television camera for supervised inspection by a closed-circuit monitoring by the client. Jim operators are experienced technicians, well-trained in the many and sometimes complex procedures done on equipment such as this tree. Work time at a site is restricted only by operator fatigue. The average dive limit is six hours. The actual valve extraction demands exacting, careful movements by the gym operator. Couplings are secured and checked to ensure a safe journey to the surface. The client, the wellhead manufacturer, and Oceaneering all agreed. These performance tests were successful. Subsea completion systems are gaining wide acceptance for early production, marginal field development, and alternative deep water production. As the applications for new, highly specialized equipment and techniques grow, so too does the need for cooperation. Roger, job completed, valves off. Stand by the leave bottom wall. Oceaneering 
believes that cooperation starts with early planning, taking the time to evaluate a need, decide on the best program, and tailor it to the precise requirements of the job. Cooperation means sharing ideas and experience, combining resources and knowledge for the best results. And cooperation means saving you money, providing the most capable and cost-effective systems available, managing today's technology to face tomorrow's challenges together. We're Oceaneering, and we have the team, equipment, and experience to do the job the way you want it done.